Hello, everybody. It is me, Pacific. Wow. Don't you love it? People are funny. My channel is a study without me even trying. As they would say in the British, a laboratory of tests. And I don't deliberately do that. It just happens. I told everybody I made a Tumblr account. I wrote specifically on my Facebook, if this offends you, don't ask for it. Don't look. Somebody writes one of my YouTube fans and says, Pacific is a sin enabler. Go feed your lust on his account. Isn't that interesting that that person took the time to look? This is the kind of thing I'm talking about, about Christians, is that fake righteousness. You know, that fake righteousness that, oh, that's wrong, but I'm going to go look over there and see what Pacific's doing. Why did you look? That is the bigger question. And for those who want to know, there are pictures of some topless women and nudes, what I call classy nudes. I tell people if they don't like it, don't go there. Simple. I also told people, I am not saying that I recommend everybody do this. I am not recommending that everybody say that this is thus saith Pacific, therefore it's law. Pacific has struggled with things so long. I have looked at these pictures. When I am dating a girl, I don't look at this stuff. When I'm alone, I do. I have tried everything not to. I do good for a few days. And I've had every Christian in the world tell me all the formulas for success of how they either stop doing it or don't do it. And yet, out of every person I've listened to putting on my filters, filters because 99% of what a lot of people say is BS. And I had to learn the hard way when I became a Christian that one of the first stages I went through was that religious mode oh, I'm a Christian, I can't cuss, I can't listen to that song. Oh no, just hearing that song, oh, that might taint me. Never realizing you're already tainted, dude. You're already infected with the sin virus. When Pacific talks on his channel, I have my opinions, and I very clearly state this is my opinion. I talk about biblical facts and sound theology, and I state this is what the Bible teaches. When I talk about my struggles, those are my experiences. Those are my personal things that I own. The Pacific is always given a disclaimer. Don't follow after me in every area. Don't follow after anybody in every area. <clears throat> Go find the best Christian you know. Hang around them long enough. You will see that they've got some sin, some struggle, some bad habit in their lives that you don't want to emulate. <clears throat> This channel actually started out as just a channel. I did not set out to say, oh, I want to attract all the people that have fish symbols on the back of their car. Never said that. This channel is unique because it pulls in people that are new agey, atheist, MGTOW, for those that don't know what that means, men going their own way. It is pulled in lesbians. It's pulled in gays. It's pulled in bisexuals. Did you know that on my channel, there are actually bisexual Christians on my channel? I have stated exactly what God's word says about all of this stuff, but it is not my intent to drive them away and say, oh, you're not just like me. Go away. My channel is keeping it real and people want to mock that. They don't come to me and talk to me. They go to my fans and go, bet, 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 bet. after looking at the site. Don't kid yourself. That person probably looked and went <laughs> and afterwards felt guilty about it and then decides to write everybody bla blasting me. That is classic Christianity in the U.S. Oh, look at Pacific's immoral stuff. <laughs> I know people. I know people very well. I know people that get on here and there was a woman who got on my YouTube and said Pacific has no moral rectitude, blah, 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 blah. Never came to me, talked to me. See, people don't realize this. Women and others don't realize. Let's talk about a guy in Oregon. I think he's still out there thumbs downing. my Every video I put out is a thumbs down. Even videos of me showing the garden or a construction project. No controversy. 
There are nitwits out there that call themselves Christians. There's a guy in Oregon that wrote me a letter and threatened me, said that by me talking about my past experiences, I was enabling, condoning sin. He's probably the same idiot titled Find Peace that wrote one of my viewers. Yes, that's his ID. It's amazing. The hypocrisy, the shadow lands that so many Christians live in. They'll condemn all this stuff, but secretly they're lusting inside. They'll go watch movies and then they'll condemn porn. They'll condemn all this stuff. And one of the things that Pacific has tried to do is keep it real. That I admit, I have not come to a place in my life where I have arrived to a state of perfection. People might ask a question, do you endorse pornography? People could say, because I put a site out there with some topless women, etc. Yes. I don't endorse it. It's around me. I look. I notice beauty. And I have reason in my mind, not saying it's right thinking that, hey, they're showing it anyway. They're out there anyway. I'm not paying for it. I'm not buying it. I'm not paying one dime for it. People say, well, you're promoting it. You must avoid the appearance of evil. I know that. A lot of Christians are looking for this perfection that doesn't exist within themselves. And when they see imperfection in another, they immediately quote Bible verses and go like this. My question to those people is, are you yourself really growing? Are you yourself becoming a more loving person? The guy in Oregon wrote me saying, I'm not even supposed to associate with one who calls himself a brother and is engaging in this stuff. Then why are you going back and forth in the letter after letter and then you threaten me and you tell me I look like a chemotherapy patient because of my head being shaved. That was years ago. Telling me I'm a scrawny little geek, you could break my neck and I'll come out there and kick your ASS. Wow, that's Christ-like. And then I blocked him and banned him. And he comes back under another ID when I did a video attacking this guy's ridiculous letters and says, I don't understand. How did I threaten him? And he was dumb enough to make a name very similar to the one he had just had. I have seen it all. It took me a long time. When I first got online, I was intimidated by the trolls. I was intimidated in chat rooms. People got on the mic and yelled, Pacific! Ah! Wow. And it dawned on me, you're at a computer, they're at a computer, they don't know where you are. What is the problem? The trolls come constantly. There's one right now called Bruiser. Gets on my site and he says, Lunatic. It's probably one of the resurrected butthurt MGTOW guys or one of the Mr. Organ, who knows? There, there's a couple of people that are just camped here. He takes the time to say, I wouldn't even listen to 10 minutes of this. And he writes this on every video. And yet you see every video I post and you make a comment on every video I post. Why is that? Hold on. I got to shut the dog door. I don't need any skunks coming in here. I'm going to tell you something. There are Christians right here that want to befriend me. There's one at work. He's a nice guy, but he wants to talk my ear off. And he wants to go on and 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 on about stuff. And I like him, but I can only deal with about 10 minutes of him. And I got to exit stage right. I hung around men's groups when I got saved. They talked about lust. They talked about the struggle of masturbation. They talked about immoral thoughts, the struggle with porn. And I found that over and over, these men never really got a beat on the problem. I knew a guy in Duluth that we were good friends for years. He was flaming homosexual. Nope, he and I never did anything. Never saw him nude, any of that. He's married. He's married to his wife. He had his homosexual lovers in the living room of his house. He got saved when he met me. And he proceeded to break the lifestyle. He still kept making trips down to Lee Erickson Park in Duluth and hooking up with men and <coughs> in the park, in the bushes. And then he come to me, man, I know this is wrong. And this, this thing went back and forth. Then he came to me and said, my wife is obese, Nels. I, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. That's my nickname, Nels, by some of the guys in Duluth. 
Other guys in the church came to him and said, well, you know, God says you're not supposed to deprive your wife except by mutual consent. And I said to my friend, I said, um, look at their wives. Look at how hot looking they are. It's easy for them to say that. None of them are married to a heavy woman. Now, with all due respect, he did things that made his wife just pull up drawbridges and put a defense shield around her that after he got saved, she attacked him vociferously for years because he had beaten her, he had busted furniture, he drank, he yelled and screamed, had his gay lovers in the house. I can't imagine any woman enduring that for years, she did. I said, why in the heck did she divorce your butt and tell you to get out? I have no idea. But then he got obsessed with materialism. Beautiful house he had, he decided he talked his wife. The wife owns the property, 40 acres. He says, can we sell five? We'll keep 35 and I want to build a new place. And she was like, I like where we are. He finally talked her into it, built a garage. They moved in the garage while they built the house. And then he built a separate studio where he goes and retreats from to get away from her. I've stayed in the studio. It's, it's beautiful. He spared no expense on anything. Slate floors, heated floors, triple pane, sliding glass windows, wrought iron, professional wrought iron guys that came in and welded wrought iron railings, everything. The guy spared no egg spats. I am sure that the whole property and everything is probably a, a million dollars. Metal roofs, house perfect, house beautiful, Minnesota style. But I watched him get obsessed with projects. I watched him become self-righteous. Self-righteous meaning, I'm going to have to break fellowship with this guy, Nels. He won't even go to church anymore. You know, if you don't want to hang around him, don't hang around him. But you got to break fellowship with everybody. You just say, hey, neighbor. I'm going to say something that's damning against me and any of us that struggle. <clears throat> that if you call yourself... Any man who calls himself a brother and is involved in sexual immorality, you have nothing to do with him. That's what the Bible says. But let me ask you all a question before you jump on that and go, yep, time to get rid of Pacific. <clears throat> when you masturbate over another woman other than your wife, <clears throat> when you masturbate over a woman as a single guy that is not your wife, and then the next day you masturbate over another woman, what is that? What is it? My point is that all of us stand condemned, us men, just on the lust verse alone. That, that just that verse single-handedly, and, and we can even go a step further. That goes for gay males too. Gay males lusting after other men. That is sin. <clears throat> so at what point do you break fellowship? How about gossip? How about women that gossip, 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 gossip? Women that hate on other Christians. Very self-righteous, very rude. Do you notice something? Do you see where I'm going with this? The Pacific post a big advertisement saying, hey, here's my account. Go to and post links on my Facebook, YouTube. Did not. Somebody asked for it. I gave it to them. I find it interesting that people go over there and look, knowing that it's going to be something contraband, and then they're going to come back and make this big religious statement. You know what? <clears throat> I know there are people that would disapprove of what I'm doing. I know that. I know there are guys and girls that are fans of mine that would say, oh, Pacific, Pacific, Pacific. I know one that would disapprove of it who also looks at porn herself. Let that settle in, people. If we're going to talk about keeping it real, and somebody made a comment, one of my viewers, who happens to be a very, very um, easy to talk to male viewer, we chat on Facebook, and I like him. There are Christians on my channel that are living with their boyfriends or girlfriends. <laughs> There's a Christian across the ocean who told me that he has bisexual feelings. What am I supposed to do? Oh, I have to break fellowship with you. I've had those. I have. I'm 
My son just informed me that he was dating a girl. I was really happy. She's a Christian girl. And he told me yesterday, well, that ended. I said, why? And it's his age, not an adult. Well, because she had a girlfriend and she really hurt her. I said, were they dating each other? He goes, well, yeah. What are we supposed to do? The Bible says, come out from them and be separate. It does. But does it mean we go like this to everybody? The vex symbol. What are we supposed to do? Retreat into our holy huddle? I can go down here to Frozen Chosen Baptist Church, and they're doing a damn good job of that. See, when we talk about Christianity, it's easy for people to say, oh, the civics in rebellion. He's justifying his sin. No, I'm not. I know it's wrong. But I like it. How many Christians are that honest about it? They go through a Jekyll and Hyde dynamic. They get all hot and heavy. Oh, gosh. Mm, mm, mm. And then afterwards, the guilt sets in. And they do the knee-jerk reaction. They pretend. Ooh, I'm not like that. I'm not like that. I'm not like that. The flesh lusts against the spirit. The spirit lusts against the flesh so that you cannot have what you want. It is a war, folks. And I've said before, there's things we can put into place to stop it. I've tried a lot of things. I, I don't want to use an excuse. I don't want somebody to say, oh, look, see, Pacific's testifying with because. No, I'm not. But I'm going to say there's a couple things that enter into this. Women aren't very nice. I have tried. I dated a Christian woman. She was a bitch. She had an ex-meth ex problem. She was rude when I... Come on, she's trying to find a nail in the little carry-all. I lean over, don't touch her. She goes, I'm trying to find a nail, and I can't find the right size one. All I do is look. She turns around, get, just stop getting close to me. Don't hover over me. What is your problem? And then the whole thing over the bar of soap, and just one thing after another. And you go to work, and you've got all the, sorry, fatties in the break room that think they're all that in a bag of chips that are rude. The other day, one of the girls in the break room, who I've always been nice to, shoves me and says, um, move. Uh, how about excuse me, bitch? You know, this is the kind of stuff I'm up against every single day. I go into businesses, women with all their cleavage showing, everything showing. God is the one who can judge. God is the one who can discipline me. God is the one who can take me out of this world. God is the one who can swat me off the planet. Not you. You know, I'll tell you something. I've sat under a lot of pastors. Pastors that were good teachers. Rick Ferguson. He's dead now. He's a pastor of Riverside Baptist Church. Outstanding preacher. Did a series called Devolution. He admitted from the pulpit, I'm not very good on love. You're in the pulpit. You're a pastor. You're a pastor, a shepherd of a flock, and you're not good on love? The guy that he hired was one of his buddies from Missouri. He was anything but a pastor's heart. He came across more as a used car salesman. His wife was beautiful and sweet. But he? And I saw a whole atmosphere there of ex-Southern Bells, Southerners from the South, always talking about their Southern styles. I've heard and seen it all in Christian circles. A guy in Sunday school class. I was then working at a truck dealership. And some wussified Christian Southern boy says, Yeah, my wife and I had a breakdown and we were stuck at a truck stop. And it was very, very uncomfortable. you got to be kidding me. When I travel across the country, I stop at truck stops. they got some of the best diners in there. No one has ever bothered or intimidated me in a truck stop. Why? Most of those guys are driving at trucks for a living. They come in, they want to eat, they want no BS, they want to shower, and they want to go to sleep or get on down the road. The only problem at a truck stop is maybe the lot lizards out on the lot trying to proposition guys for sex. The guy went on and on about how scary truckers were. And I'll bet you that the same little Christian pansy ASS white boy probably drives his car and cuts two inches in front of them.
One of my closest friends is a truck driver. When I was a kid, I loved semi-trucks. I watched BJ and the Bear. I'm going to tell my viewers something very bold, and I'm going to say it loud and clear. If you're a wussified Christian and you don't like the things I'm doing, get the hell off my sight. Can I make myself any clearer? You know why? I'm tired of your trolling. I'm tired of your butt sput comments. I'm tired of your self-righteousness. I'm sick of it. You do nothing to bring glory to God with that. You think you do because you've been conditioned in this country to criticize and throw your spiritual snowballs at everybody else. And while you think you're so holy, what were you doing looking at my site, you hypocrite? And you are. Why were you there? You are the one that takes the biggest rebuke, not me. I was bold. I put it out there. said, if this offends you, don't ask for it. And how much you want to bet this clown is probably still looking, mm, nice pictures. Mm. I talked to the Sunday school teacher, called him on the phone and said, look, I don't know how you do this, but you might want to explain to your class that when I was sitting in there in that guy he told his little story about how scary a truck stop was for him and his wife that I work with truckers and they're some of the nicest people I know and just because they're not all Christians I said there's a whole lot of Christian truckers out there in fact more than you would dare to believe they're in a truck all day they're dead alone they get to hear the still small voice of God over that diesel engine You know what I like about truckers and bikers who get saved? Is they're real about their struggles. I don't consider myself a trucker. I drive trucks, but I'm not a trucker. I haven't pulled trailers. I haven't, I cannot call myself a trucker. I drive CDL vehicles is what I say. I'm more of a bus driver. told the Sunday school teacher, you know, that guy was offending me. Well, you know, people are used to their comfort zone. Well, challenge them out of it. There's a whole lot of people moving freight in this country. And while Pussy Boy goes to church on Sunday saying, oh, these people are scary and are not Christians. And buys his little Izod preppy shirt at the mall that the truck driver delivered. You might want to remind him of that. Am I mad? Yeah, just a little bit. It's okay. It's my channel. I'll bitch if I want to. I have been around women that want to mold me into the, their ideal of an image of what they think a Christian man ought to be. I've had in the last couple of weeks women trying to tell me the way I need to be. And I'm tired of it. Those same women don't tell themselves how they need to be. Women that need to lose weight. Women that use excuses for their weight. Women that use excuses for this, that, and everything else. Sorry, if I can't get an erection and get attracted to you, why am I going to pursue you? You want to condemn me for looking at a picture of a topless, slender girl? Shoot, I know in real life I can't have one in the U.S., so why not at least have some temporarily release? You know how many men I've talked to that have the same problem? The Bible also says it's not good for man to be alone, but we're alone. And it's easy for people to come back and spiritualize that. Well, it's not time yet. Okay, 49 years have gone by. How about the other guys? How about, how about the guy in Missouri that's in his 30s? No girl has any interest in him. He's having a tough time finding work out there. And it's not because he isn't trying. Viewers, I could go on and on and on and on. If you really want to get into the Bible, and I tell everybody you should, that Bible is convicting to every single one of us, and nobody measures up to it. Nobody. Just because you came to Christ doesn't mean you suddenly met the righteous requirements of the law within yourself. You met them only by putting your faith in the shed blood of Jesus. 
Yes, the Bible says abstain from the appearance of evil. Yes, don't do this, don't do that. But how many Christian women, how many Christian men apply every single principle of Scripture and can look me in the eye and say, I'm trying. Bull crap. I see women not trying about their gossip. I see women not trying about their little all that in a bag of chips attitude in the name of Jesus. I've even listened to Christian women talking about, well, he doesn't like me because I'm a Christian. Oh, you're so superior, aren't you? I remember when I was in high school. I look back now, I'm embarrassed. This girl's name was Rhonda. She was not a hottie, but at the time I thought she was cute. Blonde, cute face. And I wrote her a note saying, you know, maybe we could sit in the cafeteria and eat lunch together. Wow. There's a big, bold stride. Not, hey, you want to go out and have your number? She wrote me a note after a couple weeks saying, you're not even saved. Ha, ha, ha. And you knew that? You didn't even know me. We just sat in class, said hi to each other. She went to the potter's house. I was offended. I showed it to my friends. I said, what is it? Oh, she goes to that nut job church over there. You know, it's funny. When I first got saved, I never heard anybody say that when I went to high school, even the non-Christians, they'd always come in at the church. There were two churches across the street, the Mormon religion. I don't call it a church. They do. The LDS and their little seminary and the students would go back and forth from Prescott High School, their seminary. And then a block over was the Potter's House. Everybody in Prescott, whenever you mention the word Potter's House, got this crappy grin on their face. Oh, yeah, the Potter's House. They were the ones standing on the corner of our small little town of, what was it, 38,000 when I was first there. It's much bigger now. And these people were standing on the corners. You're going to go to hell if you don't repent. And they had some good outreach programs, except it was all tongues and got to be filled with the spirit and yelling and screaming and buttonholing people, getting into their faces. Going down to craft festivals around the courthouse plaza and going up to people who are there to look at art and telling them, you know, if you don't trust Jesus, you're going to die and go to hell. Timing, guys. Timing. I hung out with the Potter's House. When I first got saved, it was the only aggressive game in town that had movies. And then I was into the Christian rock and they had a band down there. But they were obnoxious. I'd go in, I'd watch a video, the cross and the switchblade, some of the evangelistic films. And that was good until afterwards. And then you start hearing, and they'd all start going off. And then they start playing this music. And I'm like, wow, this is wild. You know, even then I'm going, this is called church. Really? There, 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 there. Jesus, you really got me going. You got me going. La, da, 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 da. You really got me. You really got me. Whoa. <laughs> Man, really? <clears throat> At the time, I thought that was cool digs. As I begin to mature, I said, man, this music's no different than the world. And people will look at me and say, well, you're no different than anybody else. Walk with me for a while and you'll just, you'll, you'll have to change your view. Even though I still struggle with sin, even though I do things that some people might go, whoa, what are you doing? Most people will still say, you're different. You're honest, you're a hard worker, you're nice to people. You're... I find that most Christians in the U.S. don't even major on the word kindness anymore. They dot their little eyes. Oh, I don't look at this. I don't do this. I don't touch this. But you're a jerk for Jesus. <clears throat> My, the, 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 there's a woman that I know that claims to be so spiritual she's not reached one person for Jesus Christ. She's had no profound discipling influence on anybody. The civic can count five that God used him in spite of himself, even in the midst of my dark valleys, to reach for Christ and impart to them truth. Some of them ended up hating me later because they got self-righteous, whatever. Oh, some of them, one of them in particular, ended up hating me because I finally confronted him for his rude behavior to me year after year after year, condescending that I thought when he became a Christian that would change, and it didn't. Hey, I admit, I've been dysfunctional all of my life. What else is new? I have tried to be holy. I have tried to... 
go to all the prayer meetings. I've tried to do this. And at the end of the day, no matter how spiritual you get, how much fervor you work up, no matter how many good sermons you hear, you go home, you shut the door, and you're still alone. And you still have temptation banging at you. You're supposed to resist it. You're supposed to. But to you. How many Christian women today are actually kind? I got a Christian woman who's dating a guy. I don't know if they're living together or not. But they both looked at porn together. And enjoy it. I know Christian couples that have been faithfully married to each other. They've never, at least on the outside, never cheated on each other. But you go to their house and it's full of all the stuff they don't need. His and hers, SUVs, everything is high dollar expensive. And when I spend time hanging around some of these couples, I, I knew a couple in Spokane. I liked him. His wife was the church secretary of the church I went to. She was a bitch. I remember the first time I called the church. I got this woman that answered with an edge. I said, yeah, I'm calling to find out what your church believes. And I could tell the minute she talked, she's a Mexican woman. And she had an edge to her. She had an attitude. Just on that phone call, I came so close to not going. But then when I came to the church that Sunday, she came up. Are you the one that called me? I said, yeah. Then she was all nice to me. Well, her and her husband, her husband's a white guy working class man, Norm, and I liked him, nice guy, his name was Norm, and uh, he'd invite me to lunch, we'd go, he had chickens and had me over, then they had Bible studies at their house, and I went, and I felt very uncomfortable, I thought, there's something about her that's not very sincere, Her house was like a museum. Antiques, finely appointed, nice place. I thought, this place is absolutely beautiful, but I don't feel the warmth. There were other women that showed up. There was a couple women that showed up that were more like me. They and their husbands liked me. I liked them. We connected with them. But then there were other women that were what I call a high-maintenance women that sit there, take their shoes off, curl up on the couch, and pontificate their views and just everything was fake everything was contrived and one day I said something and I got this look she goes well you need to show the love of Jesus I said the love of Jesus defined by you is going to work different than the way I define it I live in a harsh world lady and I'm sorry I don't live in yours and you don't live in mine well we're all I don't want to hear it you have a husband, you don't work. You have a husband, you have no kids. You have a husband who gives you everything you want. You are a materialistic whore. And you're going to sit here and talk fake to me? Lady, ride in my bus. Ride, walk in my footsteps. Most Christians in the U.S. don't have the capacity. To, in fact, most Americans don't have. There's an old Native American saying, walk a mile in my moccasins. And most Americans don't do that. Most American Christians are very awful, judgmental, rude about things until they themselves go through it. And all of a sudden, the first thing they do is go, oh, I wasn't very nice to that guy. And I'm. We got a lot of Christian trolls on YouTube. I wonder where in the Bible it says that one of the fruits of the Spirit is being a troll. Going to another fan of mine and saying, yeah. Pacific, blah, blah, blah. That's following biblical protocol, right? But the deeper question is, why did you look at my site? Because I'll bet you, you didn't just see one picture and leave. I'll bet you, you scrolled and looked and looked. I love hypocrisy. It's, it's humorous as heck. The trolls that I have on my channel that write on every video I produce and say, I, you're not even worth listening to, you're retarded, you're an idiot. And I wrote an, uh, a guy yesterday and said, it's funny, you take the time to write these comments, you're watching some or all of this video. 
you're going to call me a lunatic, you might want to look at yourself that if I feel that somebody's a lunatic, I'm not going to come back and leave comment after comment after comment. You're bored. You're you're having fun with this. You're making your troll comments. You're making your troll presence known because you have a poopy diaper and you're screaming for everybody to change it. Well, Pacific isn't going to change your diaper. Take your smelly bun hugger pampers and get out of here. And I'm not real happy about Google. They It used to be when you blocked somebody, you blocked him. But now somebody accurately called it GooTube. You block somebody and I don't see them, but everybody else can. It's like, get that fly, that poop-sucking fly off of my channel. I don't like it. We should have a right to censor people right off. Pacific struggles. Pacific struggles and Pacific admits to his viewers, to himself, and to his God. I pray the day comes when this won't be a struggle anymore. I don't need to apologize to my trolls. I don't need to give an account to my trolls. I need to give an account to God. If you are offended by me, go away. Simple solution to a simple problem. If I don't like somebody, the church I left, I could write them a barrage of letters saying the leadership sucks. You're insincere. You're unloving. You're judgmental because I'm divorced. You alienate. You're a clique. What good is that going to do? Do you think the pastor's going to get that and go, oh, I just feel the Holy Spirit. I'm so wrong. Oh, God, I repent. No. If there's one thing I've learned is that every Christian out there thinks they're right in their own eyes. I never said I was right in my own eyes all the time. I have sound theology, but the practicing of it is not always easy for me. If my way and my style offends you, go somewhere else. Get off my channel. It's very simple. But the fact you stay and keep muck rocking and digging and strife causing and gossiping and going to my fans is more indicative of a deeper problem than me posting pictures of topless women. Wow. The one doesn't affect you unless you're looking at it. But you talking crap about me to my viewers? What do you think God's going to say to you about that? I expose false teaching. I haven't taught anything false on this channel. I'm real about my struggles, very real. So I don't believe I'm being a hypocrite. I know what the Bible says about sexual immorality. The Pacific is trying something. That it's always been there, let's just get it out. And like Tonka trucks and antique collecting, that one day I'll just go, I'm done with this. That's not a philosophy I recommend for everybody. But for me, that's what I'm doing. Too many Christians live in the safe margin of saying, oh, I don't want to do that. But they're always wondering what it's like, what it's like, secretly lusting, inflamed by it. It's always been there. It's always been there. Yes, it would be nice if they shut down pornography production plants. It would be nice if all that didn't exist. But it'd also be nice if churches actually loved people. It would also be nice if other Christians actually cared instead of taking their self-righteous, oh, you sin stance. How many of these people actually love me enough to say, it grieves me when you do this. I care about you. I have never had a Christian come up and do that to me. So stop and think about that. Jesus Christ came to save us, set us free, and I see a bunch of religious do-gooders 
but I don't see a transformation of the heart where people actually, I love Pacific. I admit, there's people I don't love. There's trolls that I have had it up to here, and I say some very harsh, unchristlike, unloving things. I don't care, because I'm tired of it. The only way to deal with these people is to be harsh and very definitive. Bunch of babies hiding behind a computer monitor saying they're tough talk. They're not working a job. They're not doing anything productive. They're not making any videos. They're just treating the internet like a toilet bowl and taking a dump all over it and not even bothering to wipe or flush. <clears throat> and I say flush because they get on my channel and poop and poop and poop. Okay, you left your dog nugget all over the corner of my channel's living room. I've wiped it up. I've thrown it away. Now get out, dog. Bad dog. But you keep coming back into my living room. For those of you that claim to be Christians and you keep coming back and making your little dirty statements and stuff, do you really think that that is Christ honoring? So you won't analyze that. And this is what I'm talking about. Experiment one confirmed. That Americans yell and scream about sexual immorality, but yet secretly look at it. And yet they say nothing about their unkindness, their ungentleness, their gossip, their causing strife, sowing discord among the brethren, running around on my channel telling everybody, Pacific this, Pacific. You're a chicken pile of dookie poopy butt spot. That's it. If you don't have the guts to write me direct and say, I'm offended by this, I'm leaving your channel. You don't even need to tell me that. Go away. But no, you don't. You, you don't be the man and you don't be the woman. Godliness in America is simply a veneer. It's not genuine oak. Having dealt with antiques in my past, I don't like veneers. <clears throat> veneers look really cool. They, have, they got that fake walnut, or it's walnut, but it's a thin layer that, that's glued on. And then there's the crappy wood underneath. You can tell a veneer because when time goes by, that veneer bubbles up, blisters, peels on the corners. But I like oak and mahogany and teak and hard woods. They're truly beautiful. I believe God is looking for hardwoods too, not veneer. Pacific is not veneer. I'm hardwood with all of its imperfections and knot holes in it. Stop and think about that. Too many Christians spend too much time getting on site, condemning people, condemning, condemning. And I, I have been very bold in my vocalization of Miley Cyrus and people who attack God and attack the Bible and attack faith. You betcha. I judge her for not shaving her armpits, standing up here, pointing at everybody, yelling and screaming. It's like, wow, you know, you're a poster child for peace, joy, love, and forgiveness. Not. But I'm tired of the trolls. The Christian trolls that have threatened to kick my butt, said I'm on chemo, that I'm ugly, that I'm ghastly looking. Christian people. This is a guy who wrote me email saying, you really ought to move to New York. It's so spiritual here. You'd love this small town. There's so many Christians. Based on your trashy, vile, hate, violent producing or promoting letters that you wrote me, you got to be kidding. I want nothing to do with Oregon. I'll tell you what. I remember years ago, I was in Spokane, and there was an ad posted by an elderly woman that wanted a person, <clears throat> a male, to live in her house. She was old, and I didn't think, ooh, baby, because I was thinking of moving to Oregon. I've lived with older people. I don't think lustful thoughts of them. Lived in their house, I don't steal, I can help them with things and then go to my job. She had cheap, reduced rent. I wrote her, she wrote me back. She sent me a number. I called the number. A guy answers the phone. Who am I speaking to? Gave my name and everything. You know, 
I think it's very inappropriate. How old are you? I told him my age. I think it's very inappropriate that a man would want to live with a single elderly woman. I said, excuse me, the woman put that ad seeking a male roommate to live in the house with a separate bedroom, and I've lived with people. And then he started saying, well, she's a Christian woman, and she's kind of not in her right mind, and, you know, she should only have a godly woman in here. I said, I'm sorry. She posted the post. I responded to it, and I said, with all due respect, sir, fine. If you don't want somebody in there, who are you? Well, I'm a member of her church. I'm part of the elder board. I said, oh, shouldn't she make that decision for herself? Or is this something that the church needs to make that decision to? That's her house. That's her call, right? <clears throat> I said, I have background checks. I drive school buses. I have references. I'm currently living with a single woman from the church I go to. And not one person, including the leadership, has condemned that at all because they know nothing inappropriate is going on. I rent the bedroom downstairs. She has her bedroom upstairs. Then there's no hanky-panky. Well, you know, the Bible says to avoid the appearance of evil. I said, well, sir, when you find the men that want to give me reduced rent to live in their house, let me know. So far to date, I've never met a Christian man who's ever offered me that in their life. Pacific is unconventional. And I'm going to tell you something. We have to be very careful about avoiding the appearance of evil. Everybody's definition of that vacillates like the tide. And you don't know. What is the standard? The standard is God's word. But the problem is, is people read into things because their own mind is corrupt and dirty because somebody else thinks, oh, yeah, I'd like to go to bed with an 80-year-old woman. Oh, boy, okay. You like saggy flapjacks? Okay. Have fun. I'm not into that. An elderly woman is an elderly woman. My mind doesn't even go that way with her. I think I've made some very valid points here that, the dichotomy of a lot of people in Christian circles. I didn't even do anything wrong. I responded to her ad. I was appropriate. I have background checks. I'm drug free. I don't smoke. I'm quiet. I'm clean. I would get myself a job. I can assist you with some of the duties. Is this a full-time care position or is it just helping out? You know, what is it? <clears throat> and then some man gets involved and starts making me feel like crap because I even considered responding to the ad. I said, gee, sir, I guess I better not tell you. I lived with a, uh, in a flat in Asia with seven other women, and none of us did a thing. I didn't even see them naked. If we define things the way humans define things, we'll never measure up. When I lived in Hong Kong, I saw God's provision. I needed a place after two months, and a woman named Katie she rented to me. She had her bedroom. I had mine. No hanky-panky. No fooling around. I didn't barge in on the bathroom in her. She didn't do that to me. But there are Christians out there to say, you lived with a single Asian woman? That is so inappropriate. Where do we draw the line with stuff like that? How about Earl back at Temple Baptist in Duluth? Don't go looking for him. He's dead and gone, and it's not Temple Baptist anymore. He thinks it's a sin to play cards. He saw his neighbors, who weren't Christians, playing cards in their living room from the window of his house, and that sent him into a frickin' tailspin. If I go off the opinions and traditions of men, I will live a miserable life. Pacific does what he needs to do to survive. Pacific does what I feel God's hand of provision has provided. And when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, you'll have the peace of God. No, I don't have peace about sinning. Who does? You can't. You can't. So do you want a preacher on Sunday morning who fakes it and puts on game face and gives to you wonderfully uplifting messages and makes you feel good about yourself instead of stepping on your own toes? Is that what you want? I'm not a pastor. I'm just a YouTube guy that drives trucks and buses and has managed apartments, has done landscaping, has done construction, who's hung drywall, who's, who's uh, done lath and plaster. 
who's laid tile, who's replaced sinks and toilets and faucets, who's ripped out lawns and put in lawns, who's built things and torn things down, who's worked at factories, call centers, plasma donation centers, When a wussified southern boy comes into a church in a room full of people and starts mouthing off about how scary it is at a truck stop and the truckers scare him and the truckers are ungodly. Yes, he went on and on about that. And I'm like, and I should have said, whoa, 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 whoa. I work in the truck industry. I work at a truck dealership. And the things you're saying are so far left of center, dude. Pull up your freaking big boy pants, you little white shirt corporate protege had a guy who made a hundred thousand dollars a year selling Isuzu trucks they're those mid-size the NPRs the little ones with the box on the back they got them all over Hong Kong too I went to deliver a truck and I'd ride back with him he says, I don't think trucks should be allowed on the roads. <laughs> you sell trucks. I hate them. I hate them. They're in the way. I said, it's the car drivers who cause the problems out here, not the semis. Yes, there's some bad truck drivers, but the majority of the people driving are driving cars and pickups, and they're idiots. Alan, I said, they're idiots. Come on, man. Traffic would so flow so much better if these trucks weren't on the road. I said, no, it, no, it wouldn't. I said, when I'm caught in rush hour traffic, you know how many times I don't see a semi? It's all freaking cars and SUVs. You made your living selling trucks and you condemn the whole industry. Isn't that nice? You know how many Christian marriages have gotten married because boys have been so pent up sexually and they're told, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. So they go and find this girl who's hot. She's dressed with her cleavage showing, nipples poking through the shirt. Yes, Christian women do that too. Gets him all hot and bothered and worked up, and the guy can't even think straight, can't even think about appropriate relational. Do we have relational skills together? He's just fixated on who I want a piece of these. Gets married, and the first thing that hits him the week after honeymoon is that the two can't even live together because they're not compatible. Most of our Christian dating has not taught men and women how to look for a good mate. The emphasis is always on this perfect definition of godliness. Nothing about compatibility. And the woman he marries is anything but godly. You can tell by her manner of dress or lack thereof. He's not godly. He's got raging hormones that are out of control. And he's about to bust a nut, so to speak. Gets married just so he can enjoy a physical relationship without sinning because now we're married. You think God doesn't see all that? I love people. It'd be so humorous if it weren't true and this was science fiction, but this is reality. I'm a sin enabler. Only if you let me be, and so are you, and so is everybody else. You give me two weeks in any man or woman's house, on my channel or anywhere, and I will find the flaws and you will see them in me. I guarantee it. It's the first couple days you can play the game. But after a couple weeks, especially after a month, living in the same quarters as you, gloves are off, baby. You want to see a person's godly? Live with them. Some of the godliest people out there lived all by themselves where nobody could get close to them to scrutinize their life. Some went all the way across the world where nobody could hold them accountable. We don't know what they struggled with. We don't know what they did in the privacy of their shut bedroom door. I'm going to tell you something that I've noticed. <clears throat> Anybody want to read something interesting? Read about the life of Vincent Van Gogh. He wanted to go in the ministry. He had a major problem with alcohol. He lived off his brother's income, and he was a starving artist that never made it. It wasn't until after he died and parted the scene that his works became fortunes. The guy lived a tragic, depressed life. 
I've noticed something. I've noticed something about myself, and I've noticed something about people who have a voracious hunger for God and the things of God. This is just what I've noticed. They have a voracious sexual appetite, too. Don't ask me why. We're all wired different. But sometimes some of us who can be so intense for God and have such a passion for him, we also got a passion for these other things that can be sinful. People that come out of drug addiction, prostitution, alcoholism, they seldom go to Baptist churches, seldom go to Lutheran or Presbyterian or Mennonite or, you know, the more conservative. They go straight into the Pentecostal church. Why? Well, because they got to get rid of this addiction. Now we got to have a euphoria to replace. So now we're going to speak in tongues. We're going to get slain in the spirit and be slapped up on stage and slain. People who come out of drugs and all that other stuff tend to fall very prey to false teaching. These are facts. This is not something I'm pulling out of my hat. Pacific is made of clay. I've been under people. This friend I told you about, the rabid materialist. He always said, I, we need to hold each other accountable. Shoot, making love to my girlfriend and he'd always drive 25 miles from out in the country and start banging on my door. Well, of course I'm not going to answer my door. I know you're home. I know you're in there. I don't have a car. So he finally said, you know, when I'm in the middle of doing something that isn't pleasing to God, do you really think I'm going to open the door and say, hey, come on in. Let's have some fellowship, brother. If you know what I'm doing, why don't you call? And if I don't answer, take that as your clue. People are funny. I'm going to wrap this up with one honest statement. Pacific has tried. Don't look at porn. Don't look at this. Don't go out and have sex. When I lived in Duluth as a single guy, there was no internet. I was fascinated by Lake Superior and ships. I'm an all-American guy. Go to work, get off. I see beautiful girls on the beach. I feel that loneliness. Now I'm a Christian. I don't know how to relate to people because it's suddenly dawning on me. People are looking at me funny because I'm a Christian. I, I couldn't process that. I'm like, why are they looking at me funny? Because I believe in God who created us. I couldn't get that. See, they tell you all this stuff in church, but they never tell you how to flesh that out. That when you become a Christian, you will be hated. But people seem to think that when you become a Christian, oh, you're crucified with Christ, so the lusts need to go away. I wish that that happened. But experientially, and everybody I've talked to, it doesn't. I can talk to you about people I know that are godly people and struggle with lust. And look at porn. Women included. Not lesbian porn, but just guy stuff. I have read Neil T. Anderson's Bondage Breaker. I've read Steve Arterburn's book. Every one of those guys made money off their books. You know, guys that come up with their little cutesy expressions, the purity principle. The guys that want to white knight their own daughters and say, my daughter's a princess and I want her to be chastity and I don't want her to have sex before and they make a shrine out of it. And then what happens is the woman becomes a princess syndrome and goes, I, none of your subjects deserve me. And dad put that in her. That's not Christ-like. We spend so much time in America telling our daughters to be so pure, so pure, so pure, so pure that we fixate on that. We make a shrine out of them, put them up on a pedestal, just like Eric did in his video. Guy comes over to hug a woman and somebody comes up and pumps the bicycle pump and up goes this pedestal and the woman's up there going, 
That was perfect, Eric. That was perfect. There are Christians who put their little princesses on a pedestal and continue passing the baton of narcissistic, self-centered, self-righteous, nasty Christian behavior by so-called girls for Jesus. Girls that are picky. Girls that are taught by their dad. Oh, you wouldn't want him. He's divorced. He looked at porn. He did this. I've met guys that have been married to Mrs. Perfect. Five years, the marriage is in divorce. Or, or they marry another guy that's been conditioned till death do us part. They get married, can't stand each other. They live their separate lives. They buy SUVs and doggies and more doggies and more dogs and more kitties and cutesify their house. There's no passion. There's no love, but they go through the motions. They go to church every day. They watch dirty movies. They watch, it, it's ridiculous. I would rather be with a woman who has been down the road of sin in life without having totally destroyed herself than be with Sally Self-Righteous who's a perfect virgin and never did anything wrong. No, thank you. I have met several women that are in the churches, one in Spokane, one in the church in Arvada, the secretary. They don't have sex. They've never been married. They're my age. They're rude. Picky, and they will go to the grave. And now they're older. Breasts are starting to sag. The skin under here is starting to wrinkle. The chicken wings are showing up. They're still looking for a godly man. Well, guess what? I'm a godly man because I have the righteousness of Christ, but I don't want you. I'm almost 50. I don't have chicken wings. Nothing's sagging yet. I'm going to get me a firm hottie, thank you, who's real. And if I don't, I don't. I'm getting tired of this double standard. I'm tired of the people that want to lambaste and scream at me, don't watch my channel. Go away. If you were to take and put a bug on the wall of every viewer who attacks me, put it in their room and follow them around, you would see major discrepancies. And the reason they attack me is because they're not going to get on here with a video saying they masturbated, they struggled, they hated somebody. They're not going to do that. You know why? Because they're scared. I've had people come on this channel telling me, oh my gosh, it's so funny to watch you because your life's such a train wreck. Interesting, but at least they're listening and they still stick around. God can use my brokenness and my frail humanity to still reach these people. Even if they're being arrogant, cocky, and doing it all for the wrong reasons, I'm going to say like Paul says, their motives are for harm. But they're here, they're listening, they're hearing truth. People taking the time to write, L-U-N-A-T-I-C in big capital letters all across my videos say lunatic. I laugh. They're the lunatic. If I think somebody's a lunatic on YouTube, I'll leave a comment going, you are way off in left field, buddy. I'm out of here. There was a guy on YouTube who was a photographer. He was an adult. He had a video titled The Most Beautiful Woman in the, in the World. And it was a teenage girl in seductive, sensual poses. And I wrote him back. He even said she was under 18. And I said, you know, this is so inappropriate. She's a teenage girl. She is pretty. But you're an adult. And you're the photographer. And you're taking pictures of her in seductive poses. What are you doing? He wrote me back with all his garbage. I'm friends with the family, this and that. And I said, yeah, and you probably got a raging heart on over her. And you're an adult promoting this with underage children.
the mother wrote back on his channel, laugh out loud, this guy's a nut job. Of course, mother likes her daughter looking like a princess. Mother probably lusts after her too. Yes, that is going on. That is going on. There are women that are lusting after their daughters now. It is happening right here in the United States. Don't ask me why. I don't know what sparked this, but it is become epidemical in this country. I see all kinds of things, but I don't keep going back to his stuff and writing and writing and writing. And she's not the most beautiful in the woman in the world I address it. I said, that's highly subjective. She could be the most beautiful to you, and that's okay. But the most beautiful in the world, don't think so. Thank you for encouraging another narcissistic, sensual princess who will never know how to make love, never be passionate with her man. She's just all about showing off what God gave her to begin with. Pacific is working out his salvation. I haven't arrived. If you don't like the steps I'm taking to get there, I'm okay with that. I'm not hanging on people hanging on me. I'm not thinking, oh, I lost a viewer. Oh, no. What if they all left? Well, then it's time to end the channel. Simple. I can take a hand if everybody flocked out of here. Bye-bye. But I don't believe that's going to happen. Because this is not a Christian channel. It's a human channel. I don't agree with atheists, but yet one of my good friends is an atheist. I don't agree with homosexuality, but I'm kind and get along with gay people. I don't agree with lesbianism, though I admit pictures of them kissing and bras off and nipples touching nipples, hot stuff. I'm friends with lesbian women at work. I said the other day I would have no problem marrying a woman who is bisexual. Wow. Just saying. You know how many couples out there that are in Christ have all these raging secret desires? But they'll never be honest about it because the church doesn't encourage them to do that. It's time to stop playing games, people. i got to get ready for work. I make no bones about it. I'm a work in progress. I'm not where I want to be, but we're heading there as best we can. You cannot change another person. In fact, if you're honest, you have a hard enough change, time changing yourself. So if you want to come on here and give me all this crap and flack out of your mouth, just realize that you yourself need to change in areas that you probably haven't done a real good job on. To always temper it with that. There's a difference between people making loving comments to me that I can take versus somebody who's just on their self-righteous pedestal who doesn't give a damn about me. And that shows right away. Most Christians have not been taught, it has not been pounded in them when they got saved, how to love people. That, that is not in our American churches. Because Americans teach you to be independent, you're complete in Christ, I don't need anybody else. That, that's what churches teach today. That's wrong. There's a lot of wrong stuff in church today. There's a lot of wrong things in the way my trolls come at me. Trolls for Jesus, man. Is that a fruit of the Spirit? To threaten me? To threaten to kick my butt to call me a chemo patient? Is it? Mr. Organ was a turd. And if he's listening, he never did write me and apologize and say, you know what, I was wrong, I repent. None of that. So much for the fruit of the Spirit. Every one of these trolls that have come after me with their Bible verses and stuff have no love don't really care about me. They're just waiting for an opportunity to pounce because deep down inside, they don't have the guts to make a channel. They don't have the guts to come forward and something that I say rocks them and makes them feel very uncomfortable. It's not my discrepancy that I have a Tumblr account with topless women. That, that's not it. There's something deeply inside of them that's disturbed and the only way they're going to deal with that is by finding fault in everybody else. It's true. And people will say, well, you find fault with everybody. I find fault with me too. This is Pacific signing off. Bye-bye.